have Dr. Asha Bain Shah in front of me, the OIM of the Medical Education in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. I'm not a suitable person for this keynote address. As I said in the beginning, it's Banshi Sahu, he keeps on uh, pressing us, doing hard work to read. In fact, such addresses should be given by basic science worker like Dr. Shashank Joshi you had before, you have uh, Dr. Mohan, uh, the legend people in the history of diabetes. Maybe Rav Puri was here long some back. But uh, then I thought I would be getting some opportunity to go through the recent uh, changes which have occurred in diabetes in last one to two years, hardly two years. And these advancements in clinical research have occurred in clinical epidemiology, classification clustering of type 2 diabetes, which is going to change the future of treatment. Prevention has come again and has taken an important lead. Redefining the pre-diabetes, so a long segment which we need to refer, and of course, pre-gestational diabetes. Epidemiology is a very old term, long back even Hippocrates uh, described it, but then ultimately after 1850, after the epidemiological experiment to test the hypothesis of the cholera in UK, this became the common word. But it was the Framingham study which laid the foundation. The first study which came out to be cohort study on coronary artery disease and then ultimately 80s onwards, the molecular biologist also jumped in. So we had a clinical epidemiology, we had a genetic epidemiology. And then ultimately various diseases, the communicable diseases. So the first important message we got in last two to three years is it's no more longer a rich man disease. And you look at the GDP as the GDP rises proportionally right from the Bihar up to the Chindiga, there have been exponential growth of the prevalence of diabetes. But this study, which is also Dr. Banshi Sabu was part of this is the Indian Diabetes Study and Dr. Joshi as well as Dr. Mohan. Important message is that uh, it could be anything like based on 3,421 individual, the incidence of pre-diabetes is rising up to 31.3%. And the important message is this pre-diabetes is totally preventable disorder. And therefore, when the IST was added further, this is 2023 publication, when the disability adjusted life years, these are the two new terms have been added in epidemiology and came to the years of life lost and years lived with disability. What was found that it attributes type 2 diabetes burden for 16 risk factors falling under rich categories, risk categories including environment, occupation, tobacco use, high alcohol, high body mass index, dietary factors and low physical activity. So all these have been very important issue when it comes to the prevention of the diabetes. And the word, as I said in the beginning, is largely preventable and in some cases potentially reversible if identified and managed early in the disease course. So in next 10 to 15 years, we might see the, some of the new research papers regarding the prevention of the diabetes as well as the reversal of diabetes. Since we are living longer, we have more number of years to live. We are we'll be getting more and more diabetes patients, especially in the 65 and 70s, and this has been supplemented by various observations. But this is because of the overlap, many overlap in the classification from the type 1 diabetes to type 2 diabetes, the gestational diabetes, the monogenic diabetes, and pancreatic diabetes. And you look at this particular area, where all the three to four, they overlap. And all these publications have been in last five to 10 years. This word has come, and Dr. Mohan had made it more popular, but after the Danish Center for Strategic Research Type 2 Diabetes, 3,000 odd number of patients in the Swedish group, in the classes characterized by high insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia showed the largest overlap and appear to the most distinct. And this is, now we have gone to the different clusters in the classification. And, and we call them the hard cluster and we call them soft cl cluster depending upon the genetic trait, trait one, two, three, four. And further, if you look 
this the word which is now we'll be using in the research is people with diabetes, not diabetic patient. We are no more patient. We are now people with diabetes who have a hard cluster and a soft cluster depending on the phenotype and the genotype. And what are they? The four, five have been discovered based on the also about the their various uh, genetic profile, autoimmune, insulin deficiency, severe insulin deficiency, and more. And this is Dr. Mohan's publication on my right side. You look at the result, and this is just only two years back, where 25.9% people are insulin resistant, obese diabetes. And the middle aged related diabetes and severe insulin deficiency, this group particular said, is one which requires early onset of diabetes, have a relative low BMI, low H, HOMA B, low C peptide, high HbA1c, increases of retinopathy, so they require insulin definitely. And these are the typical Asian phenotype. The genetic subtypes have also come into function now in uh, all laboratories, it's the ICMR laboratories, Dr. Mohan lab and some of the lab from the AGLS, they are also doing, uh, and there is increased pro-insulin adjusted for insulin because of pancreatic beta cell function and decreased pro-insulin adjusted for insulin and increased insulin resistance. So obesity related, lipodystrophy related, lipid metabolism related. These are the new terminology which is going to be used in the classification of genetic subtype of diabetes. This is the just two month old paper published in August 31 from one of the Indian group and this is very insignificant group, not much in the science being talked. But look, he could only classify cluster one, cluster two, cluster three based on the hyperinsulinemic and insulinolytic response and with some of the overlap. And therefore, more papers are now coming and there will be more data available in next two to three years. This translational of genetic subclassification has led to concept of monogenic diabetes as part of current clinical practice and we need to identify it. And there are a lot of Im important information, uh, the polygenic scores related to type 2 diabetes, which have potential become more predictive in future interaction, particularly with the inclusion of rare genetic variation. This word was used long back, adopt, and rosiglitazone was forgotten, uh, very badly criticized molecule. But then it's come back again. And there is a study, record study, which indicated the benefit of particular drug for certain clusters, such as sulfonylurea or the MAR. So they are coming back, has been done with on for the CERN. And the origin trial have shown that also the SID group, where it is decreased of risk of hypoglycemia, is the mean post trans domination of HBNC more than 47.5 millimol and 13% comparison with the MARD subtype. So what it has led to, it has informed us about the timing and severity of disease onset, response to therapy, improved delineation of diabetes subtypes, and subclassification of within one and two diabetes. This is important information, and all of us know now by the time, Dr. Mohan has been talking from many times in many conferences, that the individual with MODI caused up by mutation GCK have mild, non-progressive hyperglycemic present from birth with low risk of complication and typically do not require any treatment. So if you pick up such patient from the crowd, then they get reward because they may not be exploited by other uh, physician. And second is HNF, HFN1A, which responds to sulfonylurea and glucagon like peptides, et cetera, one. So what, what advantage we have learned in last three, four years after the advent of this Swedish and Danish study, it helps to accurately classify diabetes into different subtypes, helps to plan therapies based on the pathophysiology, helps to predict prognosis and prevent diabetic complication, and helps in our also approaching the precision medicine or precision diabetes. Then come second part is important for the pre-diabetes, which has come. And you look at different criteria. This is the international expert group, ADA based on HbA1c, based with the WHO 2 hour glucose, with the fasting glucose and ADA fasting. If you come too stringent, very stringent, 
then incidence could be 43.5%. So 50% of the world population could be here. If you don't make it, and you make it liberal, it could be as low as 4.3. So look at the contrast. What a contrast information. But the positive point of this contrast information is the potential of diabetic reversal and remission of the diabetes. Not only this, look at the complications. With all different criteria of pre-diabetes, the complication of the chronic kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality is also affected. So now we need to translate the pre-diabetes in relation to future complication and formulate our strategy for the treatment. This is 5,000 odd papers have appeared in the last five years only on pre-diabetes and prevention. And this is the trend which publications are being poured in. India stands somewhere here at the 10th number, though we are second or first competing uh, with so far as the diabetes prevention is concerned. But now when it comes to the number of publication for the pre-diabetes and related, this is at the 10th position. And I, I was talking to you some of the older molecules which are now coming back to rosiglitazone, pioglitazone. Look at the values of the treatment of pre-diabetes, 72% reduction. What a great information. Uh, I, and I know uh, Dr. Parikar from Mumbai is a great lover of pioglitazone. He puts beautiful presentation on how you can prevent and you can manage these patients. 72% reduction, 60% reduction with rosiglitazone. So why to say in a pre-diabetic state? And therefore, you can use these molecules, exploit these molecules in future research. Into the translational uh, signaling of the insulin receptor, getting the translocation from receptor onto the receptor RNA, and then gene functioning. And what has been found there, the paraclin repressive signal originating from B10, now the delta cell has become important, maintain the alpha cell identity with consistent repressive influence and also microstatic. Uh, we now know different targets and the pharmacy students know how to target different places right from the food intake to the AMPK signaling, lipid molecule, GLP, and also looking at the beta cell secretion, at the total beta cell mass, the transplantation, the calcium channel blockers, and beta cell protection. This is uh, very popular talk in the molecular biology based on alpha cell engaging insulin production of the beta cell ablation. And I'll quickly go through all these, all the three cells have been exploited. The alpha cell, the gamma cell, the delta cell, the immunogenicity, and look at the, on my right hand side, the is insulin MRA expression, vector trans uh, queen expression, as well as the aggregation time. So now we know that we can take alpha cell, which could be derived in beta cell, contribute beta cell neogenesis, induced by antagonistic glucagon receptor antibody. This might be interest to Dr. Asha Bain and some of the older physicians like me. We wrote few prescriptions in our initial days of the training, tolbutamide, you must have forgotten it. But this paper, and I showed it to even Shashank Joshi also, the potential of tall butamide to involve in the recruitment and increase individual calcium response. So you can exploit tall butamide now to increase the calcium response in response to insulin release. And what has been found that gradually augmented the magnitude of calcium rise in single cell cluster and sulfonylurea also recruit beta cell. Look at the information second line by measuring cytoplasmic calcium, the triggering signal of insulin secretion. So you should not now criticize solvitamide. People criticize uh, thalidomide 40, 50 years back in the dustbin is one of the wonderful molecules for the treatment of myxpan myeloma. And therefore, you may see the rise of solvitamide again. These are the trends in anti-diabetic drug discovery. FDA has approved now uh, clinical trials, and this is the 2021 and I'll show you the number of drugs which have been now been uh, approved by FDA, different combination. And, and these are the targeted pathway right from SGLT, GLP-1 or go to the bottom amylin receptor, by guanides, receptor of GABA, CGR, enzymes, kinase, 
AMPK transporters, immunomodulators, oil channel, and other discovered. So huge number of molecule in the pipeline, which have the publication have shown in last five to 10 years. Reversal of diabetes, very popular concept, is coming very fast. And uh, in long-term prospective study, outcome study, 36% have shown with bariatric surgery. Look at this data. As the year advances, at the end of five year, it, the response could be 99%. So it should not be criticized. Uh, and the bariatric surgeries have been criticized very badly by a group of the physicians. But then gradually people have known their skill, probably their skill and proper surgery would have a better response in the future. Calorie restrictions, bigonides, thiazidine, dolidone, alpha-glucoside inhibitor, GL2 and receptor all have helped in reversal and remission of diabetes. And this is the popular directive study which have shown that uh, even with the diet modification, you can reverse with some of the important drugs. The ketogenic diet, and this is where the molecular biology has come into, into the nutrition and diabetology. And you can modify the ketone food with the receptors from heterochromatin to euchromatin, and these food now can be genetically modified to give you the maximum response, at least for the prevention of diabetes. Therefore, the conclusion of this presentation, which I finished just now, was based on meta-analysis, systemically reviewed 13 relevant studies, it was demonstrated that ketogenic diet can not only control fasting blood sugar and reduce glycosylate hemoglobin, but also improve lipid metabolism, and also take care of the uh, reversal of the diabetes. We know this new molecule, teplizumab, which is a monoclonal antibody, can preserve beta cell function, stage two, and also in type one diabetes. So now we are looking, type one diabetes, when it is with brave new word publication, this is 2024 publication, just three months back, where automated insulin delivery improves glycemic control and pregnancy outcome uh, pregnancy complicated by maternal type 1 diabetes. So we have a lot of hopes, and this is last few slide, where type 1 diabetes prevention is a big revolution with this new molecule which is coming, and now FDA got the approved. This is the teflizumab, which is now being thought to, proteomics have walked into, and uh, doctor uh, from uh, Andhra Pradesh, two important, uh, Dr. Rao, now he doesn't come into the meetings, but one of the, the worker as well, Dr. Shridhar, these are the two people from Vizac have been contributing in a lot of proteomics, picking them from the urine as well. And these are the, some of the therapeutic related type 1 diabetes, progress challenges and the all. So current preclinical results suggest that even though protected islet cell grafts in a re retrieval subcutaneous site could restore normal glycemia for at least one year in type 1 diabetes patients. Early gestational diabetes, again, very popular talk by Dr. Mohan Group, have shown that now you need to target not only the gestational diabetes, also at the early diabetes when it is uh, gestational diabetes. And look at the difference here. This is the classical uh, GDM incidence. Look at the pre-gestational diabetes when it is in the women. And this has led to rise in the prevalence as well as the incidence and to 2.82% women now at the group of the target. This is the native, look at the Asian distribution, 8.61% with GDM prevalence in comparison to the pre-GDM prevalence. Therefore, to finish my talk, I, as I said, I'm a poor school master, primary care school teacher of medicine to my students of undergraduate for 40, 50 years back. But then what we have learned in last one to two a year, this is what Dr. Banshee was very particular. You talk only those publications which has come in the last two years. So he put me on very hard task and I could only squeeze out some of these information about the prevalence of diabetes is largely prevent. This word is to be kept in the mind of all clinicians. It's a largely preventable, potentially reversible if identified and manage early in the disease. So this is the breakthrough. Then different clusters which is now being identified and they have helped in precision medicine. MODI, we all now understand that this is a small group, GCK, non-progressive hyperglycemia, right from the birth and low risk of complication, and do not require treatment. Of course, HF and 1A and GLP where can be given, 
for the treatment with sulfonylurea. Preserving and restoring functional beta cell mass is another molecular investigation. Pancreas repressive signal originating from beta and delta cell have maintained the alpha cell identity. So it is th they are th that's of their importance. The bi cell biology of alpha cell is equally important as yes, the beta cell as well as the delta cell. Local signal drive conversion of alpha cell inhibition of proximal beta and delta cell leads to substantial increase in insulin alpha cell numbers. So if a potential chance of uh, regeneration of these cells. Tall butamide stimulated pancreatic beta cell involves both cell recruitment and increase in the individual calcium influx into the, onto the beta cell. The reversal and to remission, we have learned about type 2 diabetes, modulation of cellular biochemistry, epigenetics, metabolomics by ketone bodies, implication of the ketogenic diet in the physiology of the organism and pathological state, and prevention of type 1 diabetes, which is a dream coming true with map, not only preserve beta cell function at the stage of two, but also stage three in type one diabetes. Thank you very much for listening.